Hello and very warm welcome to each one of you to this series of geology syllabus decoding. I hope you are finding this series useful and you are using this series to augment your geology preparation. In this third video of this series, we are going to cover genetics. Genetics is the second topic of geology paper 2 and it is also one of the big areas of paper 2. If done well, it can actually push your paper 2 score to a very high level. In this video, we are going to discuss one part of genetics. Traditionally, genetics can be divided into two or three parts. I prefer to divide it into three parts. The first part would be transmission genetics. The second part would be molecular genetics. And the third part would be applied genetics, where we study about biotechnology and a number of biomolecular methods and their applications. So having divided it into three parts, in this video, which is part one of genetics, we are going to discuss the topics and their scope in molecular genetics. Why we are starting with molecular genetics? The reason is that once you understand molecular genetics, then you will be able to appreciate the topics of transmission genetics even better. There are certain topics of molecular genetics that you might have already done in uh, cell biology. But there are certain topics which are yet to be done and if you are following this series right from the first video, you would recall that there were certain topics in cell biology syllabus that I had advised to be done with genetics. So that time of covering the molecular topics of cell bio has come and in this first part of uh, video, we are going to see the decoding of not only the molecular genetics, but we are going to see the restructuring of entire genetic syllabus. Because the way the UPSC has mentioned the genetic syllabus, it has actually mixed both transmission genetics and molecular genetics in a way that is not very conducive to build good concepts. So first and foremost, we need to segregate the topics into different parts so that when we study genetics, we build coherent concepts and with coherent concepts, we will always find it easier to write answers which fetch marks. So let us start our journey of genetics. First, we will do syllabus reorganization and then we will be deconstructing the molecular genetics topics. Before getting into the details of molecular biology, first we are going to see as the syllabus is given by the UPSC and we will understand why there is a need to restructure the syllabus of UPSC. The main reason why the syllabus needs a restructuring because somehow the molecular genetics transmission genetics and applied genetics topics have been intermingled. The first topic that you see on the screen is a topic of molecular genetics, but the very next topic is transmission genetics, sex chromosomes, sex determination, etc. Further comes a transmission genetics topic and in transmission genetics, if you notice, the very basic topic of Mendel's laws of inheritance is coming after sex chromosome which should not be the case. Similarly, in this paragraph, the third paragraph, recombination is coming before linkage, which again should not be the case. Linkage must be studied before recombination. <coughs> Multiple alleles should ideally be studied immediately after Mendel's laws of inheritance. Similarly, genetics of blood group should come just after multiple allele, which is the case, but both of them should be along with Mendel's laws of inheritance. So these are some of the inconsistencies because of which we need to restructure the syllabus. Next topic will be a molecular genetics topic that is mutations and mutagenesis. There are still certain more topics of molecular genetics, but then the next topic of the syllabus is basically an applied topic that is recombinant DNA technology, gene cloning, whole animal cloning and different types of vector. This should have come only after completing the molecular genetics, but that is not the case here. Now we come to a molecular genetics related topic that is gene regulation and expression in prokaryote and eukaryote. It is here one should be doing transcription, translation, genetic code and then one should be studying regulation of gene expression. I hope now you are getting the picture why I said that restructuring of the syllabus is pretty much needed. The next topic is signal molecules, cell death, defects in signaling pathway and consequences. Before anyone studies signal molecules and defects in signaling pathways, 
you should be studying cell signaling all about important types of signaling pathways different types of receptors that is not the case here so there are certain hidden implicit topic that we have to discover and finally the last paragraph deals with again applied topics rflp rapd aflp dna fingerprinting especially with help of rflp ribozyme technology human genome project genomics and proteomics so before anything else let's reorganize the entire syllabus i am reorganizing the syllabus in three parts the first part is molecular and the molecular coverage must start with the modern concept of gene and then you should be reading in detail the split gene condition that is present in the eukaryotes after that you will be studying gene expression and genetic regulation at a basic level what is gene expression how genetic regulation is controlling all the aspects of organism's structure metabolism for that matter even the behavior the next topic should be transcription although transcription is not clearly mentioned here but that you have to cover after transcription you will be studying rna processing because once the transcription is done the nascent rna is known as transcript and in all the categories of rna that is produced by eukaryotic cell the transcripts necessarily go through elaborate processing and later you are also going to learn that even in prokaryotes certain categories of rna they also go through processing transcription and rna processing if you recall were topics in cell biology syllabus and at that point i had told you that we are going to do it in genetics this is where transcription and rna processing should be studied now if you recall in the original version of the upsc syllabus the very first paragraph had mentioned genetic code but genetic code should be studied now just before translation after you have studied genetic code you should be studying translation then you are complete with gene expression and gene structure you should now be coming to regulation of gene expression both prokaryotes and eukaryotes separately next topic can then be dna motif which are evolutionarily conserved pieces of dna that you find at many places within the same genome and also in many different organisms genome this is again a topic in the cell biology syllabus according to the upsc's original plan but logically you should be covering it under genetics after doing these many topics then as one of the later topics in genetics you should be doing mutations and mutagenesis after this you should be doing cell signaling it is not an explicitly mentioned topic but before you come to signaling molecules and for that matter defects in signaling pathway cell signaling is an important topic to be done now you can deal with signal molecules defects in signaling pathways and their consequences finally you will be completing your molecular biology with cell death when you study cell death remember it is also a topic mentioned in developmental biology so when you are doing cell death here do it in a manner that you do not need to do it in developmental biology section after this you will come to transmission genetics this is the second part of genetics it is a smaller with rather limited number of topics the first topic mendel's laws of inheritance after that multiple alleles then you should be doing uh, this is a mistake uh, recombination should not be here then you should be doing uh, genetics of blood groups then you should do linkage recombination sex determination in drosophila and man and if you are preparing for indian forest service examination you should also be doing you know, sex determination in nematodes with example of cenorhabditis elegans next topic after doing all of these you should be doing pedigree analysis i would like to tell you why we are doing pedigree analysis after doing all of these because in pedigree analysis there are a number of patterns which arise because of sex linked inheritance and when you are doing sex linked inheritance it is obvious that you will be doing it after doing sex chromosomes and sex determination hence the place of pedigree analysis 
is here. After this, you should be doing hereditary diseases in men and that, that will complete the transmission genetics. The last section will be applied parts of genetics. There are a handful of topics. Mostly they give you direct short notes. The first topic will be recombinant DNA technology. It is a little big te te uh, topic and within this only you have to cover DNA cloning. After this, you will be doing three different types of vectors as demanded by the syllabus. Plasmids, cosmids, artificial chromosomes. You have to do individually their structure, how do we construct them, in what context we use them and finally how do they compare to each other. Next topic would be transgenics. Transgenics is the science of producing transgenic organism. Here you should be doing it in the context of transgenic animals. In transgenics, you should recall that it is also a topic mentioned in paper one economic zoology. So when you are doing transgenics here, do it in a way that you do not need to do it in economic zoology. Next topic will be whole animal cloning. Whole animal cloning is an exciting topic and many of you might already be knowing quite a bit about it. Uh, through your general curiosity based reading but here you will need to go into a little of geological intricacies. After that there are certain molecular techniques to begin with restriction fragment length polymorphism that is RFLP and the very next topic should be in your coverage I have restructured it is application of RFLP in DNA fingerprinting. After that you should be doing a technique called RAPID or RAPD and then you should be doing AFLP. Once you are done with this, you are ready to do ribozyme technologies. They are catalytic RNA, which can be applied in many contexts. So you should be doing ribozyme technology. And lastly, you will come to genomics and human genome project. The last topic is proteomics. So proteomics will complete your entire genetics coverage. So if you notice, the syllabus does not look big, but you have to do a number of topics. Therefore, we have divided it into two parts. In part one, we are going to study molecular genetics, their topics, their scope. The first topic, as I had mentioned, is modern concept of genes. In modern concept of genes, the first thing that you should know, and when I say no, you need to develop a way to write precisely what is a gene. Trust me, most of the students write very bad definition of gene. Find what is the correct way to express a gene. For me, a gene is either a well-defined or nested or overlapping sequence of DNA or RNA which in the cell can go through the steps of expression and can give rise to at least one fundamental effector molecule that can either be a polypeptide or can be effector RNA such as tRNA, rRNA, interfering RNA or ribozyme. There are a number of nuances in this definition. I have used many such expressions which need explanation, but that will be for some other time or you should be exploring what each word used in this definition actually implies. After that, you will be coming to gene structure in prokaryotes. Gene structure in prokaryotes, if you notice, is highlighted in yellow. That means it can be asked to you as a separate question. Throughout this presentation, anything that is highlighted in yellow, remember that it can be asked to you as a standalone question. In gene structure in prokaryotes, you have to study the operon structure. Operon structures were first found by Jacob and Monod in Escherichia coli when they were studying how Escherichia coli catabolizes lactose. And they found that functionally related genes are clustered together in E. coli. Subsequent workers found that it is the case in a number of other genes in E. coli and subsequent workers found that it is the case for most of the genes in most of the bacteria. Once you are done with gene structure in prokaryotes, which is essentially operons, then you should be coming to eukaryotic gene structure. 
eukaryotic gene structure is incredibly more complex compared to prokaryotes. There are many types of promoter elements, there are many types of promoter themselves, then there are certain proximal elements, then there are faraway elements and they all are treated in modern genetics literature as part of the gene structure. You need to be aware of all of these. Unfortunately, most of the Indian textbooks do not give you even an idea of this. You need to find out. Then you have to do split genes. What are split genes? How are they constructed in eukaryotes? So on. And later we are going to do a split gene as a separate topic itself. After split gene, you should be doing the basic of promoter structure in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Finally, the major parts of eukaryotic genes. These are the things that you ought to be doing in this topic and you will be ending this topic with a tabular difference in gene structure between prokaryotes, eukaryotes and mark it all the things listed in yellow have a potential or have a history of having been asked as a standalone short note. You need to be prepared with that. After that, the next topic is split genes. Like anything else, you need to be prepared with what are split genes, where are they found, that's occurrence. And incidentally, split genes, their discovery has quite a story. How Philip Sharp, Richard Roberts conducted an experiment where they found our loop structure and that was the clinching evidence how the eukaryotic genes have a split structure. This has been asked in the IFS examination. You need to pay attention to this. After this, how are the split genes are constructed? All of them are yellow. It means even for 10 marks, very short note, but it has a real possibility of getting asked. Prepare it independently. After that, what is the impact of a split gene condition on gene expression? And as you all know that split genes are primarily because of the presence of introns, you need to know what, how, what are the types, how many types of introns are there. These are all independent question within the split gene topic. Then you should be doing briefly the origin of introns and introns despite being non-encoding sequences, they still have a significant role to play. So what is the significance of intron? All of this must be known to you. Then you will be coming to a general idea of gene expression. And here you are going to first deal with what do we mean by gene expression. Again, your definition not only defines the topic, your definition defines you also. That means what quality of understanding, what clarity of the topic you possess. So be very careful about definitions and get from the best of the books the most concise but most complete definition. So gene expression is a sequence of cellular events that takes place to use the genetic encoded information to give rise to a fundamental effector molecule. It can be a catalytic or effector RNA or it can be a polypeptide. That's how you have to explain what's a gene expression. What is gene expression and then you will come to talk about central dogma and its modifications. What is it? How was it modified? Who modified it? What finding modified the central dogma? And then you will be coming to steps in gene expression of prokaryote. You will repeat it with the steps of gene expression in eukaryotes and for Indian Forest Service examination also add a small note on steps in gene expression in the retroviruses because they give you a completely different picture of gene expression. Finally, what is the control of gene expression on an organism's phenotype? By the way, what is phenotype? Most of us during school days think that visible character of an organism is phenotype. Is it always visible? Answer is no. There are a number of metabolic features which do not become visible to you, but they are part of your phenotype. So phenotype is any heritable gene controlled, of course, visible or scorable 
feature of an organism. So that's what phenotype is. And phenotype is primarily controlled by the genotype. Certainly there are environmental influences, but the primary control on phenotype is very certainly genotype. Once you are done with this, you are now getting a little deeper into gene expression details. So first I start with promoter structure. Why should we do promoter when it is not mentioned in the syllabus? The answer is, even if it is not mentioned in the syllabus, there has been a history of questions being asked, especially on eukaryotic promoter. If you see, they have asked GC elements and CAAT elements. That was entirely a question on eukaryotic promoter. So what is a gene promoter? So promoter is a sequence, usually in the beginning of gene structure, which mostly does not get itself transcribed, but which is essential for binding of the RNA polymerase, certain basal transcription factor, and it plays a fundamental role in successful initiation of transcription. That's what gene promoter is. You will be dealing with gene promoters in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes have a single type of gene promoter with some variations from one organism to another, and then you will be doing gene promoters in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes have three very well-defined plus two or three minor types of gene promoters. You need to have a tabular account of type 1 gene promoter, with what kind of gene is it present, type 2 gene promoter, with what kind of gene, genes is it present, type 3 gene promoter, plus what kind of RNA polymerase transcribes the genes under the control of type 1, type 2 or type 3 promoter. And you need to know where do we find type 4 gene promoter in eukaryotes, where do we find type 5 gene promoters in eukaryotes. After that, you have to study the detailed structure of type 2 promoter in the eukaryotes. It is the type 2 promoter in the eukaryotes which controls the protein encoding genes in the eukaryotes. This promoter structure is most fundamental when you are dealing with transcription in eukaryotes. So you ought to be doing this. Once you are done with this, you are ready to study transcription process. Start it with prokaryotes. And transcription, translation, DNA replication, all of them have to be done separately for prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And the same will apply for regulation of gene expression. When you are doing with transcription in prokaryote, the first thing that you have to study is prokaryotic RNA polymerase. There is only one type of RNA polymerase in prokaryotes. You have to do its structure, subunits and all. And then you have to deal with the stages of transcription. The stages of transcription to create that extra punch within your answer start with PIC formation that is pre-initiation complex formation. How does the RNA polymerase assemble at the promoter? How other proteins also come together and the stage is set for transcription. Then transcription is initiated. In initiation use certain keywords like promoter uh, uh, open complex of promoter, closed complex of prom promoter, promoter escape, promoter clearance, so on. Then elongation and finally termination. In the last you will be adding fate of prokaryotic RNA. Most of the prokaryotic RNA does not go through any processing and it becomes directly functional. For that matter the protein encoding messenger RNA is translated co-transcriptionally. Do mention that. Once you have covered it nicely, you are ready to go to eukaryotic transcription. The organization, the layout of topic will be largely similar. That means eukaryotic transcription will also start with eukaryotic RNA polymerase. But in this case, there are several types of RNA polymerases. So what are the types? Where are they located? How were they discovered? So here comes the alpha amanitin that is a fungal toxin taken from amanita phalloids and that led to a crucial discovery of different types of RNA polymerases because different RNA polymerases display different sensitivity towards alpha amanitin. You have to mention that and then the basic structure of the eukaryotic RNA polymerase. After that do basal transcription factors. These are the transcription factors without which 
in the eukaryote transcription won't be taking place you need to do them then the steps the stages are same pic formation initiation elongation and termination eventually fates of rna in eukaryotes majority of the rna get processed and that is going to be the next topic also rna processing define what is rna processing rna processing is addition of certain nucleotides deletion of certain nucleotides and chemical modification of certain nitrogenous bases that's what rna processing is all of it happens to eukaryotic rna and then there are certain prokaryotic rna for example prokaryotic ribosomal rna prokaryotic trna they go through processing do not be under the mistaken notion that prokaryotic rna do not go through any processing they do you just need to explore it you just need to write good books and you will be knowing it what is the need for rna processing that also you need to know in some cases it is the processing which makes rna continuous as in messenger rna in some cases rna processing makes it separate unit for example in ribosomal rna of the eukaryotes in some cases it makes rna give rise to a more stable structure as the case of trna so on where does it occur so it occurs in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic world give a specific example after that hn rna processing that is heterogeneous nuclear rna processing that is the precursor to messenger rna with proper sequence of events this can be asked as a separate question so you need to talk about what are the u nucleoproteins which are present in the spliceosomal complex so on same for pre ribosomal rna processing both of them are possible as independent short note i have not recently seen pre trna processing as a separate question but to complete this answer on rna processing you ought to be doing this so please do that once you are done with this you are completely out of transcription and processing of the transcript now we will be heading towards translation and before translation you need to do genetic code what is genetic code what is the need for genetic code and how nirenberg hargobind khurana what kind of experiments they conducted which eventually led to discovery and establishment of the genetic code you need to tell the examiner about it remember examiner knows everything but he wants to hear it from you he or she wants to hear it from you because that is the only way the examiner is going to assess your preparedness so how it was discovered and then features and salient characters so here you are going to talk about that they are triplet they are non overlapping they are commaless they are almost universal there is redundancy so on after this universality at the same time exception so you know that in most of the cases the genetic code is universal it means that from e coli to elephant the same genetic code operates but at the same time there are exceptions what are the exceptions look at the mitochondrial gene expression system within the mitochondria there are a number of codons which do not behave as per the standard table of genetic code you need to know all of this after that come to translation first define what is translation so translation is the terminal event in the expression of protein encoding genes which utilize encoded codon information of messenger rna to determine the sequence of amino acid polymerization by the catalytic action of peptidyl transferase center of ribosome that's how translation is defined in translation quickly review prokaryotic ribosome structure from your cell biology knowledge you have apparently done it already then do trna structure and then do in detail the prokaryotic translation factor what are the initiation factors what are the elongation factors what are the release factors and what are the recycling factors and then stages here pic formation will mean how does ribosome assemble on the trna uh, i'm sorry mrna and then 
initiation, elongation and termination. Similar structure you can follow on uh, in case of translation in eukaryote that will mean do eukaryotic ribosome, do eukaryotic translation factor. Thankfully, there are there, there are great number of similarities between eukaryotic and prokaryotic translation factor. So, it is not going to be something very difficult for you. Nonetheless, there are certain extra translation factors at the level of initiation. There is one translation factor less during the release time you need to pay attention to each one of them and then the same four stages of translation. After this, you should be coming to gene expression regulation, divide it into three parts, general, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. In general, what is gene expression regulation? Again, very high quality, all encompassing definition. Then go for the need, why gene expression is needed why it is crucial for environmental response in the correct way, how it is responsible for the developmental needs of the, the developmental transitions of the organism and how it prevents lot of metabolic wastage. And then you should be coming to types of genes based on regulation. For example, genes which are constitutively expressing versus genes which are regulated. Similarly, genes which are positively controlled versus the genes which are negatively controlled, genes which are inducible and genes which are repressible. Get hold of all these terminology, all these basics before moving to gene expression regulation in prokaryotes. And here you simply have to know the mechanisms and do not commit the mistake of thinking that only operon based control has to be done. Yes, it has to be done. So many questions have been asked to asked in the examination on this but you have to go into attenuation tryptophan operon also in detail. Tryptophan operon has been asked in civil service mains as well as IFS main can't be avoided. It is slightly complex but with some attention, with some assistance you can do it. And to complete this answer on gene expression regulation in prokaryotes, do alternate sigma factor based control, do two factor based control do antisense RNA based control, do ribozyme based control and do riboswitch based control. All of these controls need to be done. Once you have covered all of this and in detail operon based and attenuation, you should be doing gene expression regulation in eukaryotes. Start with genome level control. Eukaryotes can even change their genome by amplifying certain gene, by deleting certain gene, by reorganizing certain genes and not only that, by reorganizing the order of exons within the gene. These are all permanent genome level changes that eukaryotes can bring about, do them. After that, control by genomic packaging. So in the eukaryotes, when certain gene is needed to be expressed, what the eukaryote will be doing, that it will be increasing the level of decompaction that it will be loosening the packaging of the gene and when certain gene does not have to be expressed it will increase the compactness of packaging. So it is one of the most widely applied method of gene expression regulation needs to be done in detail. After this you should be doing transcriptional control and that too in some detail. Then you will be coming to RNA processing level control. These are the additional levels of control that you do not find really in prokaryotes. In this case, you will be doing alternate splicing, RNA editing and RNA tail addition that is known as RNA tailing. Do RNA interference, RNAi and finally translation level control where all the genes can be shut by certain mechanisms that is exactly what happens during the maturation of erythrocyte or there can be a specific genes whose translation can be blocked as we see in case of ferritin messenger RNA. Use the mechanism uh, then give the examples. Now you are ready to do DNA motif. So what are DNA motifs? What are the types of DNA motifs? Where do they occur? And the answer is they occur everywhere. In every single organism, you find DNA motif which tell a long evolutionary history. After this, what is the purpose served by them? 
and how have they evolved. That will be all about DNA motif. You don't have to do anything more than that. Move to the next topic, which is a little big, that's signaling. What is signaling? Get a good definition for that. And then what are the steps in signaling? The steps with respect to specific types of signaling molecules. We will come to that. So now define the signaling molecules, their types with examples. So signaling molecules can be hydrophobic, signaling molecule can be hydrophilic, both. Apart from that, certain signaling molecules are macromolecules, certain are very small diffusible molecules. So categorize signaling molecules, give their examples, so on, and then talk about receptors, their types, again with examples. So receptors which are linked to ion channels, receptors which are linked to G proteins, receptors which are linked to enzymatic activity, so on. After this, mechanism of action for hydrophilic ligand, mechanism of action for a lipophilic ligand, and do some case studies. Start with G protein coupled receptor based signaling, then come to receptor tyrosine kinase based signaling, then you should be doing steroid hormone based signaling, and then you should do thyroid hormone based signaling. All these four case studies are essential to be done. They have already been asked in the examination, must be done. Then come to defects in signaling pathways. Defects in signaling pathways is a newly added topic, but it is not all that new, but earlier it was not there. So defects in signaling pathway, what is a signaling defect? And then what are the causal agents and factors which bring about signaling defect? Make a good list, give example, then mechanisms. So what are the types based on mechanism. So here you will be discussing mechanism and type both under the same heading. And finally, you will be dealing with case studies. Signaling defect arising due to ligand gene mutation, arising due to receptor gene mutation, arising due to viral gene action. Quite often, the viruses introduce certain oncogenes and those oncogenes lead to such protein products which lead to defect in signaling pathways need to be covered very well. After that, due to certain toxins, for example, bacterial toxin, so such as cholera toxin, uh, pertussis toxin, they all cause defects in one or the other signaling pathway. Due to drugs and chemicals, a number of medicines interfere with signaling pathway, a number of day-to-day -day chemicals like caffeine, that also interferes with signaling pathway, need to be mentioned, and lastly, due to physiological factors such as uh, less secretion of hormone, old age, so on. Then deal with mutagenesis. Mutagenesis is a topic which is fairly simple and straight. What are mutations and then what are the types of mutation based on the extent of mutation? Is the mutation confined to one gene, a few nucleotides or does the mutation affect the entire uh, gene or maybe more than one gene at a go. So micro mutation, point mutation and gross mutation, so on. Then what kind of cell in which mutation is occurring? Is it a somatic cell or is it a germline cell? So on. After this, deal with mutagenesis and come to mechanism of mutagenesis. That is spontaneous mutagenesis or induced mutagenesis. If it is induced, is it chemically induced? or is it induced by radiation. So that is you will be dealing with it. And finally, to end the topic, you will be doing importance of mutation and research application of mutation. And here do mention the role of mutation in evolution in importance part and role of mutation in mutation breeding in the application part apart from other. So these are the topics which you have to do in the core part of molecular genetics and the last part will be cell death and do cell death in a manner that suffices both for uh, developmental biology as well as here in molecular biology. Start with what is cell death, describe it properly and then deal with the difference between apoptosis and necrosis. Interestingly, when you pronounce apoptosis, the second P is silent. 
So the correct pronunciation should be apoptosis. So differentiate between apoptosis and necrosis that has already been asked as a question. Then the salient features of apoptosis. And mind it that rest of the description will confine to apoptosis. Then genetic and molecular components of apoptosis. What are the receptors? What are the ligands? What are the signal transducers? What are the enzymes caspases? Within caspases, initiator caspases and executioner caspases. Then BCL family of proteins, APAF, so on. And then intrinsic pathway of apoptosis, extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. And when you are dealing with apoptosis, in extrinsic pathway, deal with the signaling pathway, fast based tumor necrosis factor based and finally importance of apoptosis. When you are doing importance of apoptosis, you should be doing importance for defense and also importance for normal animal development. The moment you have added certain points of normal animal development, you, you have covered this topic even for developmental biology. The nature of question whether in genetics or developmental biology are largely the same but when you are writing it under developmental biology you have to deal with the developmental significance of apoptosis that will be all. So with this you finish molecular biology and now you will be ready to deal with transmission genetics which we will be doing in the next week but before I leave you let us talk about what are the books and good sources. As always I am going to give you three sources an Indian book an international book and very certainly my own that is evolution's study material on this. So Indian book those who have seen my previous video uh, on cell biology uh, so you already know that uh, I like and recommend the cell biology genetics small bio evolution and ecology book by Dr. P. S. Verma and V. K. Agarwal. Among the Indian books I would say that this is perhaps the best book. There might be a better book but I have not come across this. So I will say that's it, that it is among the Indian books. I am not saying it is the best book I have come across. There are many books in cell biogenetics which are infinitely superior to this book. But among the Indian books it is easy to grasp in simple organized language but of course a lot of updations are not there. If you care for updations, if you care for very high quality drawings, very high quality examples, definitions and absolutely a higher level of understanding, this is the source. Concepts of Genetics, 11th edition or later by Klug and Cummings. So in the recent edition, other authors have also joined the team. So Charlotte Spencer and Michael Palladino have also joined. It is a classic among the genetics textbook globally. There are other books also Gardner, Simmons and Snestad are there, Griffith are there but this book is in a different league. It is simple but at the same time it is very rigorously written. And combining the organization of an Indian book and rigor and high quality information from international book is my study material. It is kind of usual to recommend this but please understand that there is no other motive to recommend it except that this is also a source that combines best of the both worlds nothing else I am not asking you to necessarily buy this but if you are buying this make sure that you are buying it from evolution then only you can be sure that you are buying genuine you are buying complete and you are buying latest else you are good with either PS Verma book or Clug and Cummings. So these are the books which are available. Pick up any one, make the best use and that will be taking care of your molecular part of genetics. Well, so with that discussion, we have come to an end of this video. Please start preparing genetics molecular part following the advice and the topic mapping given in this video. I have already discussed the sources. All that you need to do is to set aside time and start working hard. If at any point of time you think my assistance as a teacher is needed through a study material, mentoring or online or offline classes, please feel free to get in touch with Evolution. This is what we have been doing for last 16 years and remarkably well. So on that note, I would sign off. Goodbye and good luck to all of you and I hope you stay safe 
in these extraordinary times. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.